October um, of last year, 2011, I found the lump, went in for a little mammogram and um, they sent me in for an ultrasound and he walked in and said, do you use breast cancer run in your family? And I said, nope, nobody, no grandmas, no aunts, no, nobody has ever had breast cancer in my family. And he said, well, you do, you know, and I laughed. My mom was there and instantly was crying and I was laughing because I thought, really, like, who, really, like, really, <laughs> who, hap who does that happen to, you know, like, I'm 32 years old and nobody in my whole family has ever had it. Even just the mammogram, even before the biopsy, they were 99.9% .9 sure it was bad. And um, I know for me, I was, I guess, devastated because I just thought, what more can this girl go through? And just as it progressed and how bad it got, everything, it just kept getting worse as they kept finding stuff. It was, I think it was devastating. Not only do I get it, but I get the full stage of everything. But you can imagine being her mom and cry. <laughs> How hard it was. But the day that we heard about it, I looked over at her and it was like she was five years old sitting in that chair. <laughs> and I mean, if I could just see my little five-year-old girl sitting in that chair here and she has kids. It's very hard. All right, here's Shri. She's up walking around for the first time after her surgery. How do you feel, honey? I'm not good. <laughs> that good, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, well, we've done a lap around the kitchen, and we're on our way back to the bedroom. She was able to get up and get a shower today. And uh, she looks a lot better. She's getting a lot more color in her face. So we've got her set up in a pretty nice little cozy chair that uh, Bishop Saunders let us borrow for a little while. Right there, and she's parked in front of her big screen. So she can't complain too bad. Right, babe? All right. All right. Hi. Yo. Say hi, Logan. Hi. Say hi, Mom. Do something goofy. Give Mom a kiss. I said a kiss. Don't eat her. I was, I was home for a week, and I had woke up in the night and had slid down to where I was not comfortable, and I was in so much pain. And so I tried to get up and sit in my recliner and sleep, and I just dying in pain in the morning, and so John took me to the emergency room. I remember when the doctor came in. And he couldn't even talk. And we're like, well, what? And I could just instantly see his eyes just bellowing up. And, uh, and he said, it's in your liver. And he just started crying. And Sharice and I both just started crying. My liver had, uh it was supposed to be on your right side had swollen so much that it was now on my left side and pushing up into my diaphragm. And so to have a nurse cry and the ER doctor crying, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not, you know, like, it really is a big deal. Like, it was a big deal to think that I, you know, it was spreading and what that could mean. And, uh, and then finding out it was in your brain, like it's in your brain, like that means death, right? Like nobody lives if it's in their brain, <laughs> you know? And I got a phone call that the cancer had spread all over and I, I jumped in the car and I drove there as fast as I could and John was out in the hallway just crying all by himself and it was the most horrible thing that I've ever seen. 
I think the main thing was uh, the unknown. I mean, with a lot of disease and stuff like that, I, I would imagine the unknown's the, the scariest part. I figured there was no way that I could be tested again to go through the fear of losing a child. It's very hard on me because as a parent, you want to be able to take all that from her and go through it all for her, but you can't, so therefore you struggle. I um, am scared for her. My reactions to this was, this this can't be real. This can't happen to and another thing like this can't happen to our family. I hate to see her hurt and be sad or, you know. <laughs> Here I am, 88 years old, and I'd gladly give my life to save hers. She's got this young family to raise, and here I am. I've lived a good life, and I'd give up everything if I could trade places with her. As much as Cherise hurts because of the cancer, I think she hurts more because of the children and how they're hurting, and her husband, and the people around her because she cares so much about everybody that not only does she have the burden of being sick, she takes on that burden of trying to make everybody okay.